Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow Fury 33 bringing you an exhibition match between Numbers and Elliot N. Numbers is blue, deciding his race right now, and Elliot N is red. West side of the map playing Grekim. So, Elliot N is likely, like all Grekim players, to go for a fairly standard start with the RPs right at the resources, the Arch case at the front, and his triad. Numbers, on the other hand, is going for Vekir. He is also going for an economic start, but jumping back. Just double check, make sure you guys it all perfect. Sending out a scout, sending out a scout, Shinveer and Tethveer from the looks of it. Yes, both of them are going out a scout, their bonus. And this is on hills, by the way. This is a map that's been played actually very little on the channel. It's a fairly large map. Just gonna try to get away from this blur effect. Here we are. It's a fairly large map. It's got quite a few resources spread out. The main base has a few resources, but there's also a fairly safe expansion behind on both sides. The natural is south of the main, and there's also another expansion far in the corners on each side, which allows also for access to a harassment path to the natural. The center is got a lot of resources, brimming with resources, but it's not really that safe, obviously. And center north and south also have a fair few resources. So it's a fairly resource-heavy map, which should be very interesting because a lot of the maps we've seen recently on the tournament were not the most resource-heavy, so it should be interesting to see that contrast. I'm actually quite curious to see how it plays out, and we, as we can see here, Elliot N is very quickly sending out some Octo's south to his little protected third, or protected backdoor natural, essentially. Numbers, on the other hand, is focused entirely on developing his main. He's got QP and LC. Numbers is actually about a minute ahead of Elliot N right now. Six LC, three QP, while Elliot N is a minute behind getting five... We saw an Octo coming in here for an eighth LC, but basically he's getting seven LC right now, getting an eighth LC pretty quickly. So he's going for, looks like, very quick Octo Scouts right now as well. The Shinbeer and Tethbeer from Numbers have not yet arrived. They're very close to arriving now. They're about to get in. One of them is actually going to the safe third as well. So Shinbeer's going to the safe third. The Tethbeer's going straight into the main. So he will be seeing right away that Elliot is trying to expand to his back door as well. And that will be very useful knowledge because that way he knows exactly what Elliot is doing economy-wise. While Elliot N is attacking directly with the Octos, it's going to get rid of the Tethbeer very quickly. But it doesn't matter so much. The Shinbeer will see that there is an expansion here for Elliot N. And here we have. Oh, actually, no. Numbers is going to jump back. He probably does realize that there is an expansion. Yep, he doesn't want to save the Teth Beer. Elliot, on the other hand, has. He has not changed his expansion plans at all. He is going out to attack with the Octos, having killed the Teth Beer from his point of view. And the Shin Beer has not yet arrived at base. Has not seen. Numbers is not quite yet. No, actually, he's building a foundation right here. Looks like he's trying to build a proxy foundation. Embarrassingly enough, this is going to be very close to the RPs, but I don't actually think that the RPs will see it. To be perfectly honest, I think the RPs don't have enough vision to see what's going on, but the Shinbeer is going to figure out that there is a base here, or there's a couple RPs, and yeah, so he sees the RPs, so Numbers knows that there are RPs for Elliot N in his backdoor safe main. While on the other hand, the oh, Foundation actually has been built from Elliot N's point of view, so it worked out for, works out for Numbers in the end. Elliot N, like I said before, is about a minute behind Numbers this entire time. So Numbers will manage to get this, this Foundation up, but he hasn't actually built anything from it yet. However, with it helping healing the Shinbeer, the Octo is taking a lot of damage. The Octo will be able to kill the Shinbeer, but the Shinbeer has dealt a lot of damage to the Octo. Octos, on the other hand, are coming in straight into the base, main base of Numbers, dealing a fair amount of damage. Numbers has not quite responded yet, but he is going back. But from his point of view, about five seconds down, he is actually attacking with the set Zion Pulsar. His foundation actually has been aborted, so he's not going to bother building the foundation. But he has still attacked, but doesn't done much. The Zion Pulsar has not done enough damage to really deal with these yet. He has another Zion Pulsar coming up to help deal with it, but it's not going to be enough. The Zion Spear has come down, but the Zion Pulsar is taking up, taking way too much damage to come to the Octus. It's also hitting itself, jumping back into the depot to get repaired. This will this will help it out a lot. Very in, very good strategy, because Vekir can actually put the vehicles in the depot to repair them, but unfortunately it means that he is vulnerable for that period of time. However, it does mean he can still dance around the Zion Pulsar, and while the Octus are distracted, you keep the Zion Pulsar away from the Octus, so each time the Octus lose track of the Zion Pulsar when it jumps into the depot, which is a very useful strategy. Shinbeer, just double checking the Shinbeer for numbers, back when he was before, about a minute down from where you were seeing with the Zion Pulsar attacks. And the Octos are actually being distracted fairly well. It seems like there's a lot of remicroing going on here. Elliot N is trying to make sure he has the absolute best setup for his Octos, while, and actually, numbers has also gotten auto defense this time around. While Elliot N, like I said, he's trying to get Octos as best he can. Numbers is trying to defend as best he can, keeping his Zion Pulsar alive and doing a very good job of it. He should have already be building more units. He has plenty of resources, unless he's going for gate tech, which he might very well be. I wouldn't be surprised. But he really should be going for resources, or going for using the resources. Either uh, he should have some expansion. He has gotten his 
safe third, so he can or backdoor expansion. And Elliot N has not really expanded much more as backdoor he is now, however. So both players are taking advantage of their mains and backdoor expansions. And Elliot N is not going to be able to deal that much damage to Numbers. Numbers is doing a very good job defending, has done a very good job defending, and will be doing will be able to develop from here. But it looks like he I think he's getting gate tech. Honestly, the amount of resources he's getting, and he has a nice little foundation right here. He's very likely getting gate tech. Either that, or he's forgotten to spend resources, but I seriously doubt that he probably is... I mean, he is not He is a bit of a new player, but he's doing very well for himself just right now. Def that, that defense against the Autos, that's a very tough thing to do. He made it look easy, too, so that's pretty amazing. Kudos to him. So, Numbers doing a very good job on the defense. Elliot N trying to counter by basically building up his entire left side of the map. He hasn't built up his north expansion, but he's built up his natural and his back door. So, Elliot N's going to have a lot of resources. He's bound to be getting chronoporting very soon if he isn't already. He has gotten a reef, he's going to get advanced structures, and then he's going to get chronoporting very soon after, because that's what Grekum just do. Though he has more than enough resources to get that as well. Numbers, on the other hand, like I said, I would be surprised if he isn't getting gate tech. He really should be getting gate tech with the amount of resources he has, but he's probably quite distracted trying to get this Zion Pulsar around here. Skipping up to the harassment point that I mentioned earlier, so Zion Pulsar is in a great position to harass. Unfortunately, it doesn't have enough vision to see the RPs, but if it had that vision, if there was another unit camping in to scout out, that would be perfect. Elliot N does, under does see that there is a Zion Pulsar attacking. He is focused a bit more on getting chronoporting as well. Like I said before, he is getting chronoporting, getting Pharopod, so he's going to be going for the standard Pharopod chronoporting rush. He has an Octopod and two Pharos, instead of the two Octopods and three Pharos that most players go for, so he's going a rather less intense defensive setup, but he does have the chronoporting building up very quickly. Numbers, on the other hand, about 10 seconds up from him, does not have gate tech yet. He, I'm not sure what he's doing. He seems to be really focused on getting this this Zion Pulsar, but he hasn't actually gotten... He, uh, he, uh, here we are. Now he's getting gate tech. I was wondering, he is going to get, like I said before, he's supposed to be getting gate tech right now. He has enough resources to get gate tech, but like I said, he is a bit new, so he may not be quite as aware of how quickly he is going to be getting resources, but he is getting resources very quickly, so it's important that he actually takes advantage of the resources he's getting. Now, the Farpod has come back. It hasn't jumped back yet. Elliot has not chronoported yet, but he will be very soon, I'm sure. He does have chronoporting. He does have a Farpod. So, here we are. So, now the Farpod has been chronoported back and is going for an attack right next to the unplayable past. This is rather a risky move because the chronoport can still be undone if numbers attacks directly with Teth Searchers near the future, where they actually both are. It's about three minutes up from the chronoport. He will be able to deal a lot of damage. There is an aerial control center. There is the possibility of Teth Searchers. There is gate tech coming in, and weaponry has also been built. So, even a nicely placed or skip torpedo would deal a lot of damage, and that would be very risky, like I said, Elliot N, because Elliot N has sent back the Pharopod. It hasn't hit yet, but once it does, this green time wave should be carrying the impact, and once that happens, that will be a cue for numbers to actually attack, because he would have known that the Chronoport couldn't have been, or he might know, I'm, like I said, he is a bit new, so he may not be quite as used to it, that the Chronoport wouldn't have happened quite so quickly, but still, he'd be able to abort it, be able to get in the way of that Pharopod, do a lot of damage to it. It's going to be very difficult for him to do so and keep some everything causally consistent, but he can still deal some damage to the Farpod near the future before Chronoport's back in the first place. Farpod is coming down as well from the south, so two Farpods have come in for Elliot N, and his numbers is jumping back to figure out what he can do. He's very next, very near the unplayable past, but he hasn't actually really ordered up too much yet. He's ordering up another foundation right now to see where what's happening with this Farpod so we can actually detect the Farpod. I'm surprised he's not building a Bastion from that foundation, but he's building another, he's building a ton of foundations just to heal up, just to keep a lot of defense. All of them will attack the Farapods, all of them will be able to cloak defend. So, once again, doing a very good job of defense, beating back both Farapods, Chronoport back, very well done for numbers, and back in their present, three minutes up, he actually has three, four Shin Turchers, he'll be able to detect, he'll be able to easily detect any future Farapods that come in. And Elliot N's attack was completely aborted. He is going to try to probably send back more or just generally attack. He has enough resources to re chronoport this Farapod again, and it looks like that's what he's going to be doing. But that's still going to be a very risky move, and it looks like that Farapod will be destroyed before it's able to do anything. No other Farapods have been chronoported back. We would have known at least the departure happened. So this has been rather trying for Elliot, I'm sure, because he has been doing everything right when it comes to Grekum, but Numbers is doing everything right when it comes to holding them off. So, Elliot N re-chronoporting back another Farapod, trying to get more damage dealt near the unplayable past. I'm not sure how much damage this is going to deal, because like I said, the Farapods are being damaged very heavily. So, this Farapod will be destroyed. Actually, you know what? No, it's, it is still being attacked. It will be destroyed quickly enough. The Foundation did detect it. So, numbers, very well done defending. Very, very, very well done in defense. He should be getting a slipgate up very quickly, though. I here, here it is. That's where it is. 
So he has a slip gate up. He does have, he did just fire off a skip torpedo. I missed that, I'm afraid, but he did just fire off a skip torpedo. Would have dealt a lot of damage to Elliot base. Shin, Shin Turchers are coming in as well, dealing a lot of damage to the Arcticus. Not the best target, but still dealing a lot of damage. And at the very least, Elliot N, I believe, is actually commanding his firepods with the Arcticus, so this will actually be useful. If we jump back to when Elliot N is, Elliot N is about a minute and a half down from numbers right now, and he's going to be looking around and. Oh, come on. He is actually using the Arcticus. The Arcticus is actually a useful unit. Building for Elliot N, so Elliot N will not be just wasting his time. He's actually used that building, and so the Arcticus will be very important. If it goes down, then Elliot N will be losing his command structure. This is actually something Grekum haven't been doing a whole lot. A lot of Grekums don't use their Arcticus because it's... Well, it's a bit of getting used to when it comes to that versus the other hierarchy setups. So a lot of Grekum haven't been using it, but Elliot N is making full use of it, and Numbers is going to punish him for it if he actually gets a chance, but it looks like Numbers is more focused on the reef. It's a bit hard to tell. The One of the Shinturchers is focused on these RPs in the back. The other Shinturcher appears to be focused on their Arceus directly, which will be dealing a lot of damage if it manages to kill it, but I'm not sure how effective that will be. Elliot N has managed to... managed to pretty much defend this, and both players at the same time see that the Shinturchers have been fended off. Elliot N has taken the center of the map. Very risky move, but it would be very powerful. He has a ton of resources. He isn't spending them as quickly as he could be, but he still has a ton of resources. His triads at the center of the map, too. He has more... He has Sepipods chronoporting back. Three Sepipods chronoported back to fend off these Shin Turchers before they even hit. Very effective move. I'm not sure how Numbers is going to be able to fend off this, but he does have... He actually, where is the Slipgate? He is building a Slipgate pretty soon in the future, but he isn't getting a lot of units up yet, which is very surprising. He has plenty of resources. He should be getting a lot of units. He actually could be firing off another Skip Torpedo, although I wouldn't recommend it. That's more resources you could be spending towards units. And now he's spending some resources on units, so the Shin Turchers have been built. He needs an LC sync though. Zion Pulsers or or infantry, maybe, but Zion Pulsers are probably the best bet. Or Teth Pulsers, given the amount of air units coming in, would be the best bet because he has a lot of liquid crystal and he doesn't have much of a sync for it. And he has the north, so Numbers has the north and Elliot N has the middle. So Elliot N has a much better resource advantage, but Numbers is going to have a much easier time dealing damage to it if he actually manages to get a solid assault force in these heavy pods are doing a lot of damage. No new firepods to come in, and here's the attack. So, the RPs, like I said, have been destroyed by a skip torpedo attack, which we saw earlier. And that's the skip torpedo attack that we saw. Dealing a fair amount of damage. Thankfully for Elliot N, he did have a triad in the center, so he has a redundant triad. I'm not sure if he has any other redundant triads. It looks like he is just scouting around. He hasn't actually set up any more redundant triads. But he does, his main triad is being attacked by Shin Turgers very heavily. He hasn't gone back to attack them yet. Numbers is jumping to double check what's happening in the attack. About a minute up, or half a minute up, the attack is still going pretty well for Numbers. So Elliot is going to need to respond to this, but he's already lost a lot of units coming in. And Zion Pulsers, here we are, some more Zion Pulsers, coming in. So it looks like the LC sync has been used. Although Teth Pulsers might be a bit more effective. Zion Pulsers are very, 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 very powerful artillery units. Teth Pulsers are effective anti-air units and would be very helpful against the Sepi Pods. Shin Churchers are useful to cloaked, for detecting cloaked units, but they aren't used for fighting air units, they are bombers themselves. And here comes the, another, looks like another Plasma Cruise Missile actually, yes, hitting the center of the map. So Elliot N has, will ha lose all the RPs in the center of the map to a Plasma Cruise Missile, and Elliot N looks like he's going to be chronoporting back even more units to try to help us out, probably these Sepipods right here will be chronoported back to help out the attack. And yes, there they are, so the Sepipods have chronoported back to help themselves out, defending the attack coming in, defending the main base, dealing a ton of damage to, wow, it looks like, yes, dealing a huge amount of damage directly to Numbers, but Numbers' defenses are still holding pretty well. The Sepipods, like I said before, are intercepting units. They aren't anti-air units. Sorry, they aren't anti-ground units. They are anti-air units. So the Bastion will be able to do a lot of damage to them. But still, Elliot N is playing this very risky. Numbers did, like I said before, he managed to fire off a Plasma Cruise Missile into the center of the map. It looks like Elliot N probably had enough resources Stock, yeah, he's enough resources to stockpile that shouldn't be a problem. He shouldn't be undermined by that. But Numbers is still dealing a lot of damage in the future. And managing to hit the Arcticus, he will be able to destroy the Arcticus in time. Not in time for the Chronoport, though. The Chronoport has happened for sure. Elliot N is going to be dealing enough damage with the Chronoport to at least make Numbers panic. But it doesn't look like Numbers will actually be damaged too heavily. Numbers is doing a very good job pushing ahead, pushing away this. But actually, it looks like Numbers' forces have been... Yeah, they've been fended off by the red time wave. He has kept his forces in his base ultimately. And Elliot N has jumped back again with even more Sepipods chronoported back to help himself out. So he's chronoported back the same set of Sepipods twice at least from the looks of it. 
managing to get rid of this Zion Pulsar very quickly. Very helpful move. Semi pots, however, are being distracted, which will give Numbers time to react, and his base has been well set up to react against this too. So Numbers does have a base set up to react against air units coming in. Numbers has actually jumped back as well. He doesn't know, he won't be able to quite fend it off as easily as he might like, but he does have Repel on, or did turn it on. So he's, like I said before, doing a very good job making use of Vecure defenses and teleporting all of his units right into the base, dealing, once again, a bunch of damage to this Arcticus. This Arcticus will be going down very quickly. He attacks it a bit later, but the attack is still going on, so Eliadan will lose his Arcticus. Eliadan is actually corner pointing back even more units to fend this off. Deal a lot of semi buffs coming back, which are dealing a lot of damage to the Shin Churches. will be able to stop those Shin Churches from attacking that Arcticus. So this is the same Shin Churches attacking the Arcticus, but Auto Defense is doing a great job at getting rid of these semi buffs. So one semi buff left, and soon to be no semi pods, actually no, two semi pods left, but one semi pod is right next to the Bastion, it'll be dead very quickly. The other semi pods taking damage from the foundation has, has been destroyed, so the semi pods are being damaged very quickly. Elliot N will have to fight with a much stronger force if he wants to get through Numbers' defense, because Numbers really knows how to defend. Very clear that this is the case. So Numbers, about two minutes up from here, has set up his slip gate to repel any units coming in, I'll randomly teleporting them around the map. He's expanded, wow, he's expanded to the northeast third, he's expanded to the north, or north expansion, he's assaulting the natural of Elliot N. He's already taken care of the main, the center as well. So from Elliot N's point of view, he's okay, but from Numbers' point of view, there's a lot of damage being dealt, and it's very difficult to tell if Elliot N is going to be able to fend this off. He, he's building more Sepi Pods. He's likely to be chronoporting them back very soon. He has tons of resources. He really should be... He's running out of chrono energy, but he really should be building up probably across the timeline. However, Farbot's coming back as well. He's really got a lot of resources. However, this Arcticus is going down. If you use the Arcticus to chronoport back any of these units, it will be a problem. It doesn't look like he, these units are attached to the Arcticus, and it looks like they will be chronoporting back. But Eliadan is out, very low in chrono energy. He won't be able to chronoport these units back for a while. He will have to wait about 10 seconds or so to chronoport units back. He's cloaked a bunch of the fire pods as well. And the Reef has been destroyed. The Reef is not that useful except for healing right now, but that might be exactly what Eliadan needs. And Eliadan's in a very bad position. He won't be able to chronoport these units very quickly at all. It looks like the... Yes, the Shinters have been chronoport, or teleported back, sorry, to help fight... Actually, we're having teleported back, too. They... Looks like they were actually destroyed by one of the time waves. So, Eliadan is sending back another chronoport, and... Super... Oh, no, a PCM actually came in, dealt a ton of damage, finishing off this entire main. So, Numbers... Like I said, Numbers sending off a pl plasma... Or, not plasma, a sip, skip torpedo. <laughs> They're very similar weapons, but... One of them chronoports on arrival, one of them teleports to the point, to the destination. And the Skip Torpedo is the one that teleports to the destination. So Numbers is continuing to keep up his good work, doing a lot of damage. Elliot N looks like he's going to be chronoporting back all these Sepi Pods. Yes, he's chronoporting back the entire lot of Sepi Pods, sending them all into attack. So very huge, unplayable past attack against Numbers. I don't know how Numbers will be able to defend against this. He's done a very good job so far. The Repel is on, so the Repel will be able to help out a huge amount. Cloaked to Fire Pods will be able to get through, but the Bastions will finish them in no time. Semi Pods are being repelled away, and they aren't going to be able to attack, so the Unplayable Pass attack has been completely useless, and Numbers will be able to deal enough damage to win from here on out. I think this is Checkmate. I really think this is the end of the game. Numbers has a lot going for him right now. He's already set up another nuke inside the base, so... of Eliadan, that is, and Eliadan is taking a lot of damage. His Unplayable Pass attack, Last Ditch Effort attack, was was completely turned around by this Slipgate here. He will have a bunch of Sepi Pods in the middle of the map, which will help out later on, but still, that attack was very powerful. And here comes Plasma Cruise Missile, unfortunately destroying more of it, Numbers' forces than Elliot ends, but that was still, at the time, it was still actually quite useful. Unfortunately now, Numbers may want to change around that order while he still has a chance, because that's going to deal a lot of damage to him, and that might be a problem. But Elliot N is taking a huge amount of damage. From his point of view, he's taking a huge amount of damage. He actually only has RPs from his point of view. He's waiting for the green time wave. That's his only hope right now is that green time wave saves him. But Numbers, at the same time, is actually... He is actually quite... Quite healthy. He has a lot of resources. He has a lot of Ted searches coming up. He has a lot more LC than QP, obviously. He doesn't have a lot of RPs in his main moving around. He does have a lot of active RPs, though, around the map. And he's just running around, finishing off Elliot N's last expansion. This green time wave is the only thing that will be able to help him out, but it looks like, judging by the red and blue bars on the time wave, damage taken, damage received, that Numbers has dealt all that damage he dealt for real, and Elliot N has taken all that damage for real, and Elliot N really doesn't have much of a chance right now. He has some units, he has a triad up in the north, and I think Numbers is going to be looking through us very quickly. Numbers, at the same time, looks to be teleporting around a bunch of units, trying to figure out where the heck anything's going. Sorry, teleporting around the RPs, trying to get them to an expansion. He should really start teleporting around, because... He isn't in the safest position. Elliot N still has a huge resource reserve. 
And there have been games before where a player, a Grecan player with a huge resource reserve and no RPs has managed to outdo their opponent because they actually managed to build up like Elliot is doing right now. So this is Elliot N's big chances. The only way he's going to be able to get out of this check is to be able to get these semi-pods back in time, chronoport them all, deal a ton of damage. I'm not sure if this is going to be the best move because Numbers has a lot of Teth Tertures in his base. Those are mass Mantier units. So Numbers will have to defend against this, but he's also going to be able to see the Teth Tertures and see the semi-pods before they chronoport, I think. No, yes, before they chronoport, the, Se the semi-pods have actually been completely aborted. The chronoport has been aborted. It's completely in a paradox state. So it Elliot N on the red time wave is doing well, but the blue time wave will carry the negative part of that paradox so it looks like or the death state rather so Elliot N is basically banking his entire survival on a paradox of sepipods and I'm not sure how effective this will be he has managed to deal a lot of damage with the sepipods before they got away but the, and the red time wave like I said that is the life time wave the blue time wave is the death time wave once that comes along chronoport will be aborted but it looks like it may not even be that case it looks it's hard to tell entirely how well numbers will be able to fairen this off but it looks like numbers still has a pretty solid defense to get rid of these sepipods, so I'm not even sure how much damage they'll be able to deal, paradox or no. Elliot N apparently trying to send back more sepipods to try to save himself, save the paradox, but it looks like his main base has been destroyed again, that same skip torpedo we saw before, hitting again, and so the sepipods are all still causally dependent, and they have chronoported back, so like I said, the blue time wave is going to be the death state though, once that comes through, the green time wave will carry the chronoport arrival, but this blue time wave carries that the chronoport is not there, so this is the death state, this is the life state, for those of you not familiar, the way paradoxes work, at least these simple ones, is that one of them will carry the chronoport departure, and that's the life state. One of them carries the chronoport arrival, and that's also a life state, but then another, the time waves in between will get rid of the chronoports as they happen because the units were not alive on those time waves, and those are the death states. And if the death state falls off the time wave, or timeline entirely, before the end of, before then, basically if the death state falls off the timeline, the left side of the timeline, then it's complete death, the paradox resolves in the defender's favor. However, it looks like this paradox may actually resolve, it's hard to tell right now, the paradox is very close to resolving in Elliot N's favor, but it's probably a 10 second margin from the looks of where it is right now, and it, it's very likely that the paradox will resolve in Numbers' favor, and if it resolves in Numbers' favor, this is Numbers' game. So like I said, Elliot N's banking this entire game on a paradox, the Ferropods are doing a very good job at defending, or at attacking though, and Numbers' defense is starting to fall short. He doesn't have, the slipper pelt does not work against cloaked units, however, the death state coming in, so Numbers will be able to actually start using his units again since the blue blue state is in Numbers' favor, and the red time wave, the red time wave is a death state time wave that is carrying Elliot N's failure to chronoport from the looks of it, actually no it's not, the chronoport was just separated enough that even if it is cancelled, I know it's permanent, Elliot N managed to make it permanent, he managed to get rid of that entire thing, wow, nicely done Elliot N, he made it from a paradox to an actual complete loop. So, nicely done, Elliot N. Numbers is going to have a very hard time dealing with this. He sent another attack, though, to destroy this. So, the Firepods won't be able to chronoport back. The Zepipods still chronoported back. Numbers attacking with a giant attack force while he still has it. Though, I don't know. It looks like Numbers' forces will ultimately be defeated. Because Elliot N did manage to just save himself. Very well done, Elliot N. It's hard to tell what this is the entire game, but it looks like Firepods are going to be able to get rid of this Teth Torture. Numbers is defense is the only thing that stands in the way. If Numbers can continue to defend against this successfully, he will have a chance, but this Teth Churcher is taking a lot of damage. It's been destroyed. The Teth Beer has been destroyed as well, so the Firepods are going to be able to attack the base almost unimpeded. Numbers will have a bit of current energy to deal with this, and it looks like Numbers is actually going to have to deal with these in the unplayable pass, too. I'm surprised, though, that Numbers has not actually chronoported back any of his units. As you can see in the timeline, no yellow, so that's no chronoports for Numbers. So unfortunately for Numbers, he doesn't have any units in the unplayable pass to help himself out apart from what he already had, and it looks like Elliot N has the advantage in this, he has a huge advantage in this one, Ted Switch was doing what they can, making a valiant effort to try to fend off these far pods, the far pods, far too many of them coming in, Elliot N is, looks like he will be able to completely wipe out Numbers' base, great comeback as I mentioned before, and here comes the attack, so, it looks like that particular skip torpedo did nothing, and so Numbers is in a very bad spot right now, the only thing you can really do is to chronoport these units back and hope for a paradox in his favor, but it's very hard to tell whether or not he's going to do that or if he's going to even try it. He only has enough resources to chronoport back three units, so he's in a very bad spot. Once this red time wave comes along, Elliot N will be doing very well for himself. At least it, from the looks of it, that's what's happening. The red time wave is going to be coming in at Elliot N's position, which is where we are now. A minute down from Numbers. Numbers is checking the unplayable pass, and once this red time wave comes, I'll double check what he's doing there too. But it looks like in Elliot N's case, he managed to have a pretty stable setup. But in Numbers' case, he actually did manage to survive, so... The Firepaws didn't deal quite as much damage as they looked to have dealt. 
And yes, it appears that Numbers has managed to save himself. So Numbers are, yeah, his unplayable past defenses were enough of a success or Elliot ends, just double checking Elliot ends Chronoports because we had a Chronoport coming in and it looks like, it looks like there may actually have been another, yeah, there was another Paradox, another set of canceled Chronoports. So there was another Paradox going on. Elliot N is still banking his survival on Paradoxes. Even though he does have a stable base, he is still not the most stable. Really, all Numbers needs to do is send back a few units to fend off that base the triad right here in the unplayable pass, and that will be enough to finish it off. And so once that happens, looks like Numbers will be able to take it if he does that. If and only if he does that. However, it doesn't look like he is planning on doing that anytime soon. It looks like he's more focused on building up his defenses just in case Elliot attacks again. Another Plasma Christmas or Skip Torpedo coming in. Sorry, Plasma Christmas was the Grecum one. That's the one that Chrono ports. Skip Torpedo coming in. And unfortunately, Elliot N jumped away from that right before it hit. Elian, however, does... He's relying, like I said, on the green time wave. Looks like the green time wave is what's carrying attacks in his favor, but his his chronoports have been mostly cancelled. So the green time wave is probably the life state of the paradox. And Numbers has chronoported back units. Finally, Numbers has chronoported... He made use of his chronoporter. Sent back a Ted Tertia to help reinforce himself. I'm a bit surprised he hasn't chronoported back more units, though he does have the resources to do it. But he hasn't decided to chronoport chronoport back any units, except for this... Another... Okay, so he's got another Ted Tertia. So he's chronoporting back Ted Tertia. Just seems to be echoing it back Several times, actually. So, making sure that he has Ted Turcher Chronoport back. Trying to do what he can with it, and the green time wave going to be coming in from Elliot N to deal a fair amount of damage, but it looks like even with that green time wave, Elliot N is actually not going to be dealing enough damage to get rid of this. There, yes, the units of numbers are going to be able to completely securely get through this. The red time wave is the only hope, but it looks like the red time wave isn't carrying new that the green time wave didn't. So, Elliot N looks to be in a checkmate position. The Sebi Pot and Faro, the only units he has left. And even in the future, he doesn't have much left. He doesn't have anything really to chronoport with to save himself. Numbers, on the other hand, has chronoported back that Ted Turcher, which hasn't really been effective for defense or useful for defense, but it may help out. The green time wave is carrying some damage, but the red time wave is carrying its undoing. So one time wave's worth of actual damage coming in, but that won't be permanent. So it looks that the red time wave will be carrying the win for Numbers. So Numbers is in a very good position. Elliot N just double checking what's happening on the green time wave and the red time wave. And sees that the red time wave is not carrying anything in his favor, and he can't obviously do anything now. He's in the unplayable past. Looking around, it doesn't seem yet he has any triads left. He has no units for triads, actually. No legal class units, nothing to split down, nothing to create a triad. So he's in a very insecure position right now. He's trying to go set that up, but Numbers is just paranoid right now that something is going on. Numbers has actually sent back Chronoport, or this is a Chronoport he had of the Ted Searcher before. And he's a bit paranoid because usually when a player is looking at the unplayable past, they've just tell Chronoport or something to the unplayable past. And when that happens, of course, as we've seen several times, you need to have a good defense set up beforehand. Numbers does have a pretty good defense set up beforehand, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. So Elliot N right now is in a very bad position from Numbers' point of view. Elliot N and Numbers are about the same time. Numbers is about 10 seconds down. Elliot N is looking around to see if there's anything he can do, and it would not appear that he has anything. He has Chronoport back, a Sepipod, and... So T-75 is coming in to attack these RPs, but these RPs are completely useless. They have not been mining anything for several minutes. They're not worth targeting. While on the other hand, Numbers is dealing way too much damage for Elliot to deal with. Elliot has nothing to build with, nothing to rebuild with. He has a few RPs scattered around the map, a Sepipod, a Faro, and that's it. He has nothing else to rebuild with. This is pretty much the game for Elliot and I'm curious if there is something he could pull out of his hat, but I seriously doubt it because right now he really doesn't have anything. I think he's just... Figuring out what's going on, double checking, making absolutely sure that he's not going to be losing this game just because of carelessness, just because he got himself hurt and didn't mean to. He may think, oh, well, I might be losing, but let's just double check because it's happened before with players have lost games. I have lost games because I didn't realize that I could actually current quarterback back units or had units set up that I was going to be in a safe position. But no, numbers is in a very good position right now. He's in a total, completely winning position and. I see no way for Elliot N to get out of this right now. Of course, I want to watch till the end of the game because, like I said, Elliot N might pull something. He is playing Grekum, and Grekum are known for massive comebacks, as we almost saw Elliot N pull off. But I seriously doubt anything spectacular will be coming more from him. A Skip Torpedo is actually coming into third here. Numbers nuking his own third. I guess he's very concerned that there might be a Sepi Blood coming in or something to attack him, but nothing ultimately coming in there. Spire has been destroyed, so Elliot N has no Spire. Like I said, he only has these two Sepi Pods. One of, actually, it's pretty stable. It's stable Permaclone, but still, that is a 
that's it, really. I mean, Elliot there isn't much he can do. He's just attacking one of the RPs with his heavy pods. Numbers is trying to just finish everything off, just find the last of the units that were around, get rid of them, and just force Elliot to surrender. But really, Elliot I see nothing for him to do right now. He's pretty much lost the game, and just double-checking, making absolutely sure, double-checking every single point, making sure he doesn't have anything he can rebuild with, anything he can attack with, just to deal enough damage to finish it off. Numbers also double-checking the employable past, just to make sure that nothing's going on. Being appropriately paranoid, then another Chronoport might come back and deal some damage, but nope, that's not going to happen. Just these RP is getting hit, not really doing anything useful. So Numbers, Numbers, Elliot N, Elliot N is now using the far north of his ba of Numbers' base to start building an Arcticus and actually start possibly rebuilding the army. So he actually has a bit of a chance to come back now. Numbers is still at a huge lead and has now been actually, he started sending units around the map, just send them to take care of the city pods and take care of some of the units that were coming around from, from Elliot N. Elliot N with the Arcticus at the north of the map is maybe going to have a chance, but Numbers will likely be coming back here and getting rid of it very quickly, so I seriously doubt this is going to be that fruitful ultimately for Elliot N. But still, Valiant Neverend, here Numbers comes. Numbers is coming in here now to get rid of this Arcticus and get rid of all the units that were hanging around here. From his point of view, he is going to get rid of this Arcticus now, so Elliot N pretty much has no chance right now. Numbers just jumping around the map, double checking, make sure, keeping a bit of a defense for a short period of time, but just double checking, seeing what is going on, because he doesn't obviously know that Elliot N has pretty much clearly lost the game, and Elliot N may still have one unit here or there that he may have, that he may be able to chronoport. Elliot N is still playing Grecum, he still has a lot of opportunity to get around this map. But numbers right now, he's scouting out, making sure nothing else is going on, he's no longer paranoid about defense, and just double checking for offense. And there is in fact a small triad in the bottom of the map, or sorry, the center north of the map for Elliot N, about three minutes down from here, and at this time again we see the Arcticus being destroyed, so there is a chronoport going off for Elliot N. He's current port back some units, but really, he's just hanging on for dear life. I don't, really don't see how he's going to be able to come back from this. Numbers continues to patrol around the map, double-checking to make sure that nothing is going on. Fishy, making sure there's no triad that he hasn't seen, and they try the middle of the map, he has ultimately destroyed, so all the stuff Elliot has in the far past is just in the past. However, Elliot does have a couple of far pods that are back here, and the current port arrivals ultimately were fruitless, but the current port departure still happened, so... All he really needs to do is, or he's probably going to try to try to echo these things back, or not just echo them, make the echoes permanent. Echo, of course, meaning that they are chronoport, but the arrival's gone, sorry, the departure's gone, so the arrival will ultimately be gone. In this case, the power bots have been destroyed about three minutes up from where Elliot was looking, but Elliot is going to probably try to see if he can permaclone these things, make them actually permanent units instead of just being echoes, basically make an ontological paradox. I seriously doubt this is going to be able to happen, but I'm sure he's going to try his best. And Numbers, like I said, just patrolling around the map, double-checking what's going on, and most of what Elliot is doing is on the blue time wave down there. Numbers is further up, so he doesn't quite see it yet, but he probably will be coming back to double-check soon. He does see it, has damage been involved, and Pharopods still roaming around just a little bit for Elliot N. He's re them over and over, trying to keep them alive, keep them from, not, from getting past the time waves that are coming in to propagate their deaths and ultimately try to make them permanently on the timeline, though I seriously doubt it's going to happen. The game has been mostly fixed up to prevent this as best as possible. Elliot and continuing, he's re chronoported back a couple of fire pods once again, like I said, and basically it seems like he's chronoporting the same fire pod, the same two fire pods over and over again to try to just keep them alive past the time moves that will be propagating their own deaths. And Numbers, of course, is patrolling around the map to make sure he gets rid of these fire pods before they actually deal any real damage. But really, Elliot N is just holding out with nothing. I'm not sure if he's trying to hope that numbers will maybe think it's not a bluff and end up giving up. Think that there's some. I really don't see why numbers would bother to give up. I mean, even if Elliot N attacked with a ton of fire pods that were running for it back, probably wouldn't be enough. And here we go. Numbers has found the two main fire pods and will be destroying one of them. The other one has managed to get out, has managed to almost escape. Elian is able to escape with this, so Elian will be able to escape with this. Chronoport back again, if he wants to. Yes, there he goes. He chronoports it back again, and has actually put, set off the defeat timer because, as far as the game is concerned, he has no units at that point in time, which he doesn't because he just chronoported the only he had back in time. But Elian is actually he's got eight, well, eight firepods, probably mostly all the same firepod. But 
really, they're not going to be able to deal enough damage, and I think they actually ended up chrono fragging themselves too, but not going to be ultimately deal enough damage. Numbers coming in with the main force, finishing off all these Faropods and Faropod Echoes, so now Elliot Ann's force has been completely destroyed, there's nothing you can do about it. He has this one Faropod in the center of the map, but that's really all he has. He might try to chronoport it again, but I really don't see what he could possibly do with that. So yeah, that's probably going to be the game, so thanks for watching everyone, and have a good night.